Bertinoro is not an archive, he is a, a museum founded in 2005 by the late lamented Senator Leonardo Melandro. And uh, the Interfaith Museum is dedicated to the dialogue between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And is uh, set up in the Bertinoro Bishop Castle. Bertinoro is a small town far from Forlì, 10 kilometers. And uh, in this castle, all the bishops of Bertinoro lived uh, until the end of the 60s during the last century. And uh, as well, uh, Claudia Castellucci says uh, how to create a museum dedicated to the interfaith dialogue without having historical documents and at the same time how to represent in a museum exhibit an, a, a human experience because the interfaith dialogue first of all is a human experience is the experience of the dialogue between human beings and uh, the museum, uh, the Interfaith Museum, uh, uh, born in 2005, it's a private foundation, and uh, today is one of the most important quality museum in the Emilia-Romagna region. is a prize that we received in uh, 2009. And uh, how to create a museum dedicated to the Interfaith Dialogue without historical documents? Leonardo Melandri was an important uh, politic for Forlì and uh, he was a member of the Italian uh, Senate and he was a member of the Christian Democracy Party. And uh, he chose the Bertinoro Bishop Castle as the best place in order to create an interfaith museum for three reasons. The first is that in the Bertinoro Bishop Castle there was a center for higher education ruled by the University of Bologna. It meant that interfaith dialogue could happen only in a place marked by culture. And the University of Bologna was a privileged space for culture. At the same time, the first idea in order to create a museum dedicated to the, to the interfaith dialogue, dates back to 1995. The museum opened in 2005. The most difficult aspect to create that museum was uh, not only founding uh, the historical documents, but it was very difficult founding the people available to open an interfaith dialogue. And the first, the, the first reason for creating this uh, particular museum in Bertinoro was the particular history of Bertinoro. Bertinoro is a small town but it was founded at the beginning of the 8th century by three Christian monks from the north of France. From the beginning of the 13th century, Bertinoro was, an, was important for the value of hospitality given to the Christian pilgrims who went to Rome and Jerusalem. And hospitality was also practiced in favor of the Jewish community. The Jews were protected and welcomed in the late uh, Middle Ages until the end of the 16th century. And in Bertinoro, in the middle of the 15th century, born Ovadia Yare. Ovadia Yare was a Jewish scholar, he was a rabbi, and he wrote one of the most important commentaries about the Mishnah. In the Jewish tradition, he is known as the great Bertinoro. He spent the last part of his life in Jerusalem and uh, when he described his life in Jerusalem, he described Jerusalem very similar to Bertinoro. And uh, the religious aspect was so present, was 
the religious aspect could be conceived as the main root in the history of Barcelona. But how to create a museum dedicated to free monotheistic religions? Well, the values on which the Interfaith Museum was founded were as follows. The Interfaith Dialogue was conceived as a desire for mutual understanding, respecting identity and diversity under the guarantee of the University of Bologna. Interfaith dialogue conceived as a new practice of, of hospitality. The interfaith dialogue and the intercultural dialogue, but I think first of all the dialogue is a part of the new and old practice of hospitality. And so is uh, to be able to understand the other, but at the same time it's it Interfaith dialogue means understanding your identity. And you can understand your own identity only with the dialogue with the other. And the other is not only a definition. The other is a human being with his history, his tradition, his way, his point of view about life. Before beginning this presentation, um, we talk with uh, Claudia Castellucci about the Abrahamic, the Abrahamic model. Abraham is a model that is uh, that is right today again. The way that we have to conceive the life as a travel, the way to conceive uh, the life as something of uh, holy the way to understand uh, the justice, not only the knowledge of the justice, but at the same time the practice of the justice, are all values that derive from the Abrahamic model. And then uh, the dialogue uh, could be conceived as finding in art <coughs> and in beauty the space to allow monotheistic communities to meet again. It means uh, that the final result of a 10-year dialogue is this. First, Senator Leonardo Melandri spent the last 10 years of his life in a patient dialogue with religious leaders, and they were involved in creation of Interfaith Museum. And the final result of a 10 years of dialogue is First, the museum today displays 200 original documents belonging to Jewish, Christian, and Islamic communities. The original documents cover a time span from the 16th until to the 20th century. We exhibit some works by artists important for their relationship with the Jewish, Christian, and Muslims, and these uh, works have been acquired by Bank Foundation and donated to the Interfaith Museum. And then 24 works of art were created specifically for the Interfaith Museum. And so, I prefer to be in the position of the deacon in the Barcelona Cathedral. <laughs> But I think that it's interesting at the same time having an, an idea and to develop this idea through the practice of intercultural and interfaith dialogue. And today the final output is this one. This, uh, this is the main place in which the interfaith museum is set up. This is the first room of the museum. All the books that you see are the free holy books for these religions. <coughs> but at the same time, we see some work of art. For example, that stained glass is a work of art realized specifically for the Interfaith Museum, as well as this work of art, the book. Many times, these religions are called the religion of the book. And that book collects the particular aspect of a Torah, of a 
Christian gospel and the particular aspect of an holy Quran. And then the room dedicated to the uniqueness of God. And also here, this is an original um, work of art from India. It's dedicated to the Muslim tradition. It's the 99 names of God prayer. While this one and this one are two works of art specifically created for the museum. This is a, a work of art made by Evan Caredio. Evan Caredio is a calligraphic artist. He lives in Siena. And here he represented the Shammai Israel, the most important professional faith in the Jewish tradition. While here there is the Holy Father realized by the mosaic technique. At the same time, there is a room dedicated to evil. We have not to forget that many times the human beings have used the religions in order to justify evil against other human beings. In this way, many times. Uh, the people were the, were the traitors of the most important values of the religions born from Abraham. And we think that it's important to show how evil is an experience connected also with the human freedom. In front of God, we are free, and we may always choose between good and evil. And then, uh, here, we have rebuilt the inside of a synagogue, the inside of a mosque, and that, but at the same time, we have important work of art, as well as this original Rembrandt etching. This Ece Homo, about this Ece Homo, there are today, again, three original versions. One is uh, conserved in Bertinoro, the other two are in Amsterdam, at the Rijks Museum and in the Rembrandt Soys. But at the same time, this museum, until March 2020, uh, 2020, was visited by students, by tourists, by religious uh, leaders, and uh, it was uh, um, uh, a live museum, as we will see. And so the mission was accomplished. Thank you for your attention. If you have some questions. Well, um, from uh, I, I began working to this project in 2003, and uh, in that uh, at that time uh, the approach was this: how to show these religious communities from the inside of each community. And so we ask to the Christian community to show the, to show its identity, its own identity. And in the same way, we ask this to the Jewish community and to the Muslim community. And this aspect was important because these three communities are different between them. But the difference is important because the difference is the main aspect that the God shares in the human being. God destroyed the bubble power, 
because different languages and different ways of life in front of God are, were considered as something good. And this was the approach that we tried to, to follow. The second approach was the common and shared aspect between these religions. They believe in an only one God. They believe that God is the creator of, uh, him, of mankind. They believe that the justice, the practice of the justice, is the main aspect for uh, a human being. And thanks to the Abrahamic uh, model, the practice of the justice is at the same time the courage to disabide to God. These are the common aspects between these three religions. The third uh, kind of approach, uh, uh, born from 2015. After 10 years from the creation of the museum, we need to change something. And the approach now is uh, the dialogue between different uh, uh, artistic languages. Because uh, these, uh, these communities are alive communities and they continue in their contemporary history to produce art. And in the artistic language, we can see the common aspect of human beings, but at the same time also the different ways to, to search the truth. And I think that is the approach that we have to try to follow in the next year. Uh, I don't know, with the rabbino, uh, I, the rabbi, okay, uh, or uh, with uh, the simple people who lives uh, in, with the prior of uh, the uh, credenti, the Christians. How was uh, the dialogue? Well, um, I think that I can speak free. The contact with the, the religious leaders were held by the senator Leonardo Melandre. And uh, he was a very, very long work, in particular with the Jewish communities. In uh, the Emilia Romagna region, there is today again an important Jewish community in Ferrara. And the most important Jewish objects that we exhibit in the Interfaith Museum are uh, gifts from uh, the Geniza of Ferrara. The second aspect is uh, that we are in the Bertinoro Bishop Castle. And so the relationship with uh, the diocese of Forli Bertinoro was more easier but uh, at the same time uh, was difficult because uh, some believers remembering what was the Bertinoro Bishop Castle refused the only idea to exhibit an Holy Quran or a scroll of a Torah. And the Bishop uh, Zarri, the past bishop in, uh, in Forlì, was uh, uh, made uh, an important diplomatic works with his main collaborator in order to understand to them that if you want to testify your own religion, you have to embrace the way of interfaith dialogue. And at the same time, it was not easy to have a relationship with the Muslim communities. The Muslim communities 
understood the interfaith museum when the museum was finished. And when they recognized the way that we observe to represent the Muslim tradition, because they understand that we give the right way to represent Islam from a scientific and historical point of view. And in this way, it, it was possible to have a collaboration with them. And uh, during the years here, we managed a lot of meetings dedicated to interfaith dialogue with the, the past president of the Islamic Republic of, of Iran, for example. Also? Of Iran, Mohammad yeah. Khatami. Or with uh, uh, the, um, the head of the Muslim community in Croatia, and so on. And uh, when, they say the, when they see the museum, uh, they said uh, it's not only a museum, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. And we have to involve this experience because it was a good uh, experience. It was a good experience create a museum and reaching the historical documents that you need for the exhibition. But at the same time, I think that it is a limit. Because the objects that we have found are the objects that we have found. And we have to work uh, in order to organize artistic events, uh, meetings, and so on, is the reason for why I prefer to be in the position of the deacon <laughs> of Barcelona Cathedral. Of course. <laughs> uh, more questions? Okay. <laughs> Not a question, just a witness. Um, I think that is. It's just testimony. Well, I think that it is possible. It is possible to to live uh, um, to create a situation of study and knowledge 
without uh, the possibility to exhibit original documents. Okay. If we see the Museum of Jerusalem in Israel, we see that, uh, for example, the ancient Jerusalem or the Jerusalem at the time of Jesus is a reconstruction. And uh, at the same time, in 2015, we have tried to rebuild the model of the Tabernacle of the Desert and the model of the Second Temple of Jerusalem. And, uh, and it's interesting to note how the visitors sometimes, not, not all the visitors, but a particular, particular categories of visitors, for example, the students of primary schools, are very interesting to watch and to touch that model. And for, the, for them, it's an important experience. And many times they remember in a better way the experience where they touch the tabernacle of the desert than having studied uh, a book, okay? Well, I think that could be a very good experience. Before the, before the lockdown, every year from 2007, in the Interfaith Museum of Bertinoro, we reach about 6,000 students from the, Emilia, from the Romania district. And for the teachers and for the students, was uh, a good experience because they get they can get in a synagogue they can get in mosques and they can get in a religious space characterized by beauty and at the same time characterized from an historical approach not characterized by a religious approach our duty is not uh, uh, to, to be religious authorities. We have to be historical authorities. And when the visitors understand this, uh, you have reached your goal. You have reached your goal. All other things happen in a natural way, as consequence, as consequence. And at the same time, having the possibility to have a dialogue with uh, Jewish, with Muslims, is important because uh, is the living knowledge. You can understand, you can uh, learn more having a dialogue of one hour with a Jewish or a Muslim believer than study a book because it is a living experience. And for us, this was important. Because we have a limit. We have not, we have 200 original objects, no more. What is out from these objects is the experience of the other. Since uh, I have seen that uh, the young students are one of your important target, how do you approach schools and, and how do you organize this um, um, educational program? Because you said that uh, you are a, 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 like a private foundation. So um, do you have an um, educational project or a program? The offer is on your, in your website. Or do you organize this, the, the staff of the museum or you count on external professionals? How do you organize the educational program? Thank you. For the educational program, um, for the educational program, we see that, uh, I have to say, 
that at the beginning, uh, during the first years of the museum, we have uh, a very traditional proposal, the guide tour and the guided tour. From uh, 2011, we have tried to have a, a different uh, approach to the educational tour for the students. First of all, uh, we have tried to propose to the students of primary schools the idea to write a book of travel, to conceive the guided tour as a, a travel into these religions. And so the students recite a book, a little book, only with the most important pictures of the objects without explanation, because you have to build your book. The other aspect was uh, the, and this was important in particular for uh, the students of high schools. The students of high schools in Italy in particular are not particularly interested to any kind of religious uh, purpose. But our duty is to be historical uh, authorities. And from this point of view, the purpose was structured using particular questions. Because for our students of high schools, there are some essential questions. What is the justice? What is the mercy? What is not the justice, the definition, but the experience of justice? And from this point of view, we, we decided to use from 2015 the storytelling technique. And we have identified, for example, three kinds of, of uh, stories. The stories of the three rings described in the Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio. The, the description of the binting between Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the, um, Jacob's Well. And at the same time, a particular description from the uh, from a, a book wrote by Attar from Nishapur, from Attar of Nishapur, the Mantik Altair, um, the verbs of birth, and is a Sufi work. And that there is, is a structure using novels. And in the novels, Attar describes Archangel Gabriel that in the paradise uh, hears God arriving on earth for welcoming a pious soul. And Gabriel wants to watch where this soul uh, was. And when he arrived on earth, he found that soul in a Greek monastery, in a Christian monastery. It was, he was a Christian monk. And uh, Gabriel was angry with God and says, why you are saving a people that is uh, giving his faith to idols? And God answers, that people is not uh, giving his uh, faith to idols. He is sharing to me. And I, I will always answer to the people that are sharing me. And how the, the students of high school can represent, for example, this uh, short novel. Because this short novel uh, stretches the question of identity, the question of diversity, and another question. If we believe that God is God, 
we have at the same time to conceive that God could save the people if the people are righteous people before being a part of a particular community. And this is, a, and this is true also for a, a Christian poet like Dante. In the 18th and 19th uh, cantos in, um, in the Paradiso, uh, Dante described the divine justice. And uh, he recognized that also people that don't belong to the Christian community could be saved. Because there is a latest, uh, I can say, a latest part of his life. If we believe in freedom, we have to recognize uh, the freedom also of the other people. And in this way, I, I today again, a lot of uh, colleagues uh, want to, to visit the Interfaith Museum using this particular technique, the storytelling technique, because also the, student, also the Italian students that don't, uh, don't follow the, the Catholic religions want to live the, this kind of experience. Because it is an experience of beauty. And the structure of the museum today is a foundation. And this foundation is ruled by the Diocese of Forli Bertinoro, by the Municipality of Bertinoro, and by the University of Bologna. These uh, uh, stakeholders are at the same level between them. They indicate seven uh, members of our uh, governance and uh, at the beginning of the year, we can uh, have uh, about 40,000 uh, 40, for, for, yeah, 40, uh, 40, euros. And at the end of the year, uh, we will uh, develop uh, activities for 100 and uh, 20, 120,000 euros with uh, projects uh, financing by the Emilia Romagna region, uh, project financed by, uh, by private foundation and so on. We are two people that today work at the museum. Do you have a website where all these offer can be consulted or, or is yeah. under or is under demand? Is is this one? Is this one? Unfortunately, is an Italian this version, but we are improving now the English version. Is a www museo interreligioso dot it, and uh, the exhibition and so on. For example, this one is a model of the Tabernacle of the Desert. Okay. No, grazie a voi, anzi, io mi scuso perché penso di essermi forse preso più tempo di quello che avevo a disposizione, quindi grazie a voi, grazie a voi della pazienza.